All right, lesson 1.1.3. All right, we're going to be looking at patterns today. And in general, what we want to see through this section and the next couple of units is that we want to be able to say, okay, here's a pattern. I can make an equation out of it. Or here's a, uh, a set of points, like a table, and I can make it into a graph. And then maybe here's a graph and I can make it into an equation. So I want to be able to move from one situation to another uh, seamlessly. So if I got an equation, I can make it into some kind of pattern. Or if I've got an equation, I can make it into a table. Or if I've got an equation, I can make it into a graph. And vice versa. If I start anywhere uh, from one of these places, an equation, a table, or a graph, or even a situation or a pattern, I can go to any one of them. All right, so that's our goal, is to move between table, graph, pattern, and equation, and be able to come up with one uh, depending on what we're given. So this first one is our first pattern. Uh, it, we don't have an equation for it. We don't have a table for it, and we don't have a graph for it. So all we're starting with on this one is the pattern. And our first question is, how would you describe the pattern as growing? What you really want to look at when you do that is the figure zero. Okay, this is where it starts before any growth or reduction is happening. So, so far that we start, we've got three of these blue squares. In figure one, we've got quite a few more squares. So in figure zero, we had three squares. And we want to see how is this growing. Well, a thing that you can do is, okay, if these were the three original blue squares, let's call them original blue squares in this one. And now we have a better idea of how it's growing. These red squares are the growth. So we see there that it looks like horizontally it's growing by one. And then on top of the blue squares, two squares come up. And on the bottom of the blue squares, two squares comes up. So it looks like we've got two red on top, two red on the bottom, and one on the side. That looks like the growth that's happening there. So we'd say here in figure one that we've got the three original plus five more. So that would be eight. All right. Now the next one, let's just go ahead and on the next one, do everything from the previous pattern in blue. So we had the three from figure zero, and then in the last pattern, we had this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. So there's the previous pattern, and we can see the growth is the same. We've got one out here, two on the top, and two on the bottom. So again, we're getting the growth of five new tiles. Two on top, two on bottom, one on the side. There's a lot of different ways that you can see this growth pattern. You don't have to see it in the same way as I'm seeing it. Um, so we're adding five more, so eight plus five more is 13. Uh, figure three, again, we've got the three original ones, in pattern one, we added these five. In pattern two, we added these five. And so in pattern three, again, we're adding five more, two on top, two on bottom, one on the side. So we've got 18 total tiles now. Okay, figure four, what should it look like? Well, it should have the three we started with. It should have, on figure one, it had two on top, two on the bottom, one on the side. In figure two, it did two more on the top, two more on the bottom, one more on the side. In figure three, it had two more on the top, two more on the bottom, one more on the side. And then in this last one, figure four, so now it's looking exactly like figure three, we're going to add two more on the bottom, two more on the top, and one more on the side. We've added five more uh, to our figure there. Okay, so figure four, we've now got 
five more, so that's 23. So we're adding five tiles each time. So in this last figure, we're not even going to draw the last one. We're going to have 28 tiles total. Okay, so we've taken our pattern and we've turned it into a uh, table. Okay, so pattern to table. Now let's do table to graph. Let's go ahead and graph this thing. Okay, at figure zero, we had three. So one, two, three. There's our first point. At uh, one, we've got eight. So there's eight. At two, we had 13. So here's 10, 11, 12, 13. At three, we had 18. My cat's meowing. Because he's a jerk. All right, number four is 23. Sorry if you like cats. I like cats, but my cat's a jerk. And then five goes up to 28. See, here's 30, and I'm going to go down to two. All right. Now, notice that I didn't make a line in between them. What I've done here is I have made something called a discrete graph. Discrete means that the graph's points have not been, uh, have not been connected. And sometimes on a graph, we want to make it discrete because we want to, we want to show that there really isn't a 1.5 or a 1.5 pattern. Like here, they didn't give us pattern figure 1.5. You know, and if I put a line here, that means there would be a figure 1.5. So it just depends on your situation. If you think that the pattern could be done as a 1.5, well, then you turn this into a line. So a discrete is when you have just points, and it just goes back to your figures, and if you think your figure deserves to have that. And then continuous I can't spell continu continuous. Sorry, I spelled that wrong. <laughs> Words are hard. Spelling's harder. All right, so there we've got that. And if we went ahead and drew that into a line. There, now it's continuous. So the continuous means that uh, all the points in between work, like 1.5, 1.2, whatever. Uh, whereas a discrete graph just means that only those points would work in, in our tile pattern. All right, last one for the equation. Since this is a line, you've probably done stuff with equations of lines before. We would go ahead and say y, and in this case, y is the number of tiles, is equal to, well, let's see what's equal to. In figure zero, we had three. So we started with three. And x is our figure number. So this is x, this is y. And what were we doing to each figure number? Each figure number after zero added five more. So it's five times the figure number, five x. So I start with three. If there's figure number one, it's five times one plus three, eight. If there's two figures, that means I added 5 twice. So 5 times 2 is 10, plus 3, 13. All right. Now, we're going to get to how do we describe this. Okay, when we describe a graph, we need to look at several things. Number one, what's its shape? Well, looking at that graph over here that we've already done, looks like the shape is a line, so it's linear. Uh, the other thing we might say is, is it increasing or decreasing? So is it increase or decrease? Well, we, we go from left to right, just like you're reading. 
So from left to right, are the y values getting bigger or are they getting smaller? So well, from left to right, it looks like the y values are going up. So this is an increasing graph. So I'm going to say this is increasing for sure. So our shape was linear, and it was an increasing graph. The next thing we want to look at, if you drew a line or uh, if you drew a line through this, what would, and we did, what would the x or y intercepts be? Okay, the x-intercepts are where it crosses the x-axis, and it looks like on ours, since we're only in the first quadrant, that there are no x-intercepts. But we can see that the y-intercept is right here, and it's intercepting at the value of 3. So no x-intercept for this particular graph. I mean, if it kept on going back here, if we had a negative figure number, which we probably wouldn't have in these square patterns, it would probably cross back here somewhere. But the y-intercept is definitely there. The y-intercept is 3 for that one. It crosses the y at the value of 3. So our y-intercept is 3. And our x-intercept is none. Because we're going to assume that our pattern can't go to a negative pattern. Like we can't have negative squares. So just for this particular one, we're going to just look like, eh, it probably doesn't have an x-intercept for this particular one. Okay, so are there any x and y values that aren't possible? So looking at this graph, it looks like it's not possible to have a negative figure number. And it also looks like we can't get below 3 of the y value, because I'm never going to have less than 3 squares. And maybe you might say also, well, it doesn't look like it had fractions. Maybe these squares are just squares that can't be cut, cut up or whatever. So it looks like for sure on this graph, the y values can't be uh, can't be below three, and the x values can't be negative. So we'd say no negative x, and y has to be greater than or equal to three. So anytime you're describing a graph, these are some of the things that you should keep in mind. If you had to explain it to somebody else, you definitely want to tell them the shape. Uh, you definitely want to say if it's increasing or decreasing. Where are the intercepts at? Uh, are there any values that are not possible uh, for the pattern that you're looking at? You might also add on stuff about it being discrete or continuous. And remember, discrete or continuous is only based on the situation. It's not based on the equation. The equation and the situation don't necessarily have to be the same thing. If it's a situation where you can't have fractions, say, for instance, if you're tracking, like, the number of students in a room, you can't have half a student or 0.2 of a student. So you would only look at integers, whole numbers, for your students. So it really depends on the situation, whether it's going to be discrete or continuous. If you can have fractions of something, continuous is what you would use. You'd use a line. If you can't have fractions of something, you'd use discrete points. All right, so there is 1-25. The next thing that we're going to want to do is I want you to look at the next patterns. And I want you to finish off the tile pattern information on number two, three, and four. And then I want you to describe the graphs, kind of like how we described them here, up at, at the top on number one. Now, if you go to uh, your Google Classroom, I've got a copy of the tile patterns there. The, the tile patterns are also in your book. But if you want something that you can work off of, uh, you can like uh, print these off 
and then uh, cut them out and tape them into your notebook or staple them into your notebook so you have <clears throat> so that you have a uh, a idea of what you've done during these notes. You could also draw these by hand if you want to. It's just easy. It's just faster, really, to uh, print them off for you. So I want you to kind of pause here and do that. In our next video, I'll show you all the answers for pattern two, three, and four. So again, right now, this video is ending. You're going to do tile pattern two. You're going to do tile pattern three and pile tile pattern four on your own. And then in the next video on this, uh, on this Google Classroom assignment, I'll give you all the answers. All right, good luck.